Hello! Today we're going to talk about the Hammond XK5 organ sitting right behind me. Many of you who are organ players, keyboard aficionados may be familiar with this organ. It's probably the best digital recreation of a Hammond organ, the B3 type, that has existed in the digital era, in the modern era. One of the things that really sets this organ apart as far as the B3 type of emulation is concerned is the multi-contact system that is under the keys that makes a huge difference when playing B3 type organ. And there's so much I can say about that aspect of the instrument. But today's discussion is about something else. Did you know that this organ does more than emulate the famous B3 sound? I run into keyboard players from time to time, even people who own the XK5, who aren't familiar with one of the fantastic things that it does, and that is its emulation of a pipe organ. When I was first shopping for an organ to have in the house, one of my criteria was to have a really solid emulation of the traditional rock slash jazz organ sound that Hammond is famous for. I do play in bands, I compose music where that sound is critical for me to have. And again, this organ delivers that like no other on the market that has ever been created since the analog era. So thumbs up for what the Hammond XK5 does for that. One of the other things I was interested in when purchasing an organ was to have an instrument that gave me good quality traditional pipe organ sounds. At the time of making a decision for purchase, this Hammond XK5 was you know, clearly in the running. Nord had an instrument, a double manual organ that also added some pipe organ sounds. That was an option. And then there was a few others that were out in the marketplace as well. Um, slowly started, you know, coming down with the, uh, the smaller list. And I do have to say that one of the things that drew me to the XK5 in the pipe organ category was the choices that they made in terms of the sounds to put on, you only get nine draw bars on each manual. I think that they made a much wiser decision than did Nord, at least for the sounds that I use. So why was this important to me? One of the gigs that I have, that I've had for many, 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 many years is uh, I'm a church organist as well. So being able to have access to the kind of sounds that I'm gonna have at church on Sunday morning, at least to get me in the ballpark, was important to me. And the Hammond XK5 really shines. We're gonna hear much of what it does in this arena in just a few minutes. Now, if you're looking for an organ that's gonna give you kind of the best of those both worlds, be it rock and jazz on one side and then traditional classical pipe organ sounds on the other side, this is a great option. We'll get into the sounds in a minute, but one of the decisions you're gonna have to make is what are you gonna do in regards to the pedal board? And this is where things get a little bit tricky. So the Hammond XK5 does make available a pedal board that Hammond manufactures. The issue with that board is it's a 25 note pedal board, perfect for jazz. Most rock and roll musicians don't use a pedal board. I think one of the few exceptions I remember seeing is Steve Winwood, who is very comfortable on the, the pedal board, uses it phenomenally. Most rock and roll players don't use that. But if you're playing jazz, um, that is one of the things you're gonna consider. And if you're a traditional Hammond player, you're probably gonna get drawn to the 25 note board. For a church organist, however, the standard pedal board is gonna be what's the, uh, what is called the American Guild of Organists or the AGO spec 32 note pedal board. And you, do, you have more notes, you have um, a specificity in terms of the spacing of the pedals from each other. And it's almost a necessity if you're playing classical music, much church organ music, there's a lot of the repertoire of Bach 
That's not going to work on the 25 note board. There's pieces from the Romantic era. Yeah, think about pieces like the famous Toccata by Vidor. You have to have the full 32 notes. And if you get the 32 note pedal board, which you're going to have to get from another manufacturer, I think mine came from Classic MIDI Works. It's not going to fit under the stand that you typically get with the Hammond organ. So that's the, uh, the trade-off you make. So as you see, my Hammond organ is sitting on kind of a tabletop that is wide enough. It's actually a kind of a repurposed computer desk. It does sit the organ at the proper height to play at, but it's also wide enough to fit my 32-note pedal board underneath that. So that is one of the issues with making this decision. And with that, let's, let's hear some of the sounds that the Hammond XK5 makes in the pipe organ category. So on the Hammond XK5, you have a digital display in the top left corner that you can scroll through a variety of options of Hammond organs. So your choices include an A100, a B3, a C3, all kind of the same. The A100 had a built-in speaker, I believe. The B3 had this um, kind of very famous look with, with, with the legs. The C3 had a much more pronounced cabinetry. You also have a version of the Hammond organ that they call Mellow. And then you get into some different options. You have a Vox emulation, you have a Farfisa emulation, and then the last option that you have all the way to the right when you're turning the dial is pipe organ. And that's what we're gonna listen to right now. So the way that Hammond has set this up is there's one series of sounds that's available on the upper manual. There's a second set of sounds that's available on the lower manual. Um, I'm gonna put in all of my draw bars, but it kind of works the same, kind of, as when you're pulling the draw bars for the Hammond organ. One of the differences, though, is on the traditional Hammond organ, as you're pulling out the draw bar, the, the volume, the, um, the nature of the timbre, basically, changes as you're pulling the draw bar out, um, and you'll get a sound anywhere from the numbers one through eight on the draw bar. So you can have the draw bar pulled all the way out, you'll get that full sound, you can push it in a little bit, you'll get less volume on the sound, and that allows you to kind of mix and match the different draw bars on the traditional Hammond. The pipe organ does not work that way. And um, I think there's maybe even some belief out there that on the traditional pipe organ, as you're pulling out stops, those traditional uh, pull tabs, that there's some option to vary the volume. And that is not at all true. So on the pipe organ, the stops are binary. They're either on or they're off. There's no in between. I do think it would have been spectacular if Hammond did make that in-between option available on this, but they kind of kept things traditional. So if the draw bar is pushed all the way in, there's no sound. And once you start to pull it out, it's on. And it's on to the same, um, same volume level. We're going to start with the sounds that are available on the lower manual. These sounds and on a two manual pipe organ, I'm typically gonna be looking at the lower manual as the great manual, the top manual as my swell manual. Um, one thing that is not available on this configuration, unless it is and I just haven't found it, but I'm pretty sure it's not. On a typical pipe organ, you would have the ability to connect the sounds of the swell to the great. So when you're playing the great manual, you have whatever sounds you pull up on the great manual, and they'll also play whatever sounds you have configured up here. The XK5 does not include that feature. Again, if I missed it, let me know, but I'm pretty sure it does not. So you've got, you have a series of nine tones available to you on either manual, and you can mix and match them in combinations. 
So on the lower manual, we're gonna start with sound number one. It's the deepest tone that's available and it's a principal 16 foot stop. Kind of bassy sounding. Our next sound is kind of the fundamental sound of the pipe organ and that's gonna be our principal eight. Then we move on to another eight foot stop and this is the Melodia. Kinda a little more mellow than the principal but not quite as breathy as the flute sounds. Our last eight foot stop on the lower manual is the Roar flute. Kind of a renaissance -y type of sound, that's, uh, that's a fun one. When I'm just playing, uh, practicing soft, that's one that I pull up all the time. Then we get into our four foot stop. So these are gonna be voiced an octave higher. We have a prestant, which is gonna be part of our principal family. Then we have an option of a four foot flute. Next, we're gonna go up another two octaves. We have our super octave two foot stop, part of the principal family, but very high pitch. Now, the next sound that we have is a mixture um, that has four ranks on it. And this is gonna be um, kind of a fuller sound, if you would. And it should be fuller. Now, typically uh, when you play the pipe organ, what you're gonna do is you're not gonna call out that mixture all on its own. You're gonna add it to a principal chorus, if you would. So if I'm gonna use the mixture four, I may pull out my principal eight, I may pull out my principal four, and my super octave. So now I've got my principal chorus happening here with the mixture, and now I have a much fuller sound available. And then the last part of the pipe organ family, both manuals include a reed stop. On the lower manual of the Hammond, you have a trumpet stop. Which you can use on its own as a solo stop or again, um, add to a principal combination, which will give you something along the lines of. So that's a look at the sounds that are available on the lower manual. We heard most of these as solo stops. Um, when a brought out the mixture. We did hear that in combination with a few other sounds. Some of the other combinations that we may pull is we'll do combinations of the flutes, so the eight and the four in, as an example. And I do find that um, Basically a combination of the various eight foot stops um, along with the four foot stops are very nice, very pleasant on the Hammond.
I think out of all of the sounds that we have available on the lower manual, the one that I tend to use the least, um, the super octave, when I add that, I don't know, to me it just, there's a kind of a harshness in the quality. It's kind of okay, but um, when I'm coming from like a, you're sitting on a real pipe organ, there's just something about it that jars me a little bit. And I think with that, I'll get to one of the, uh, the periods in time where I really had to rely on this and the pipe organ sounds was roughly about two years ago during the COVID era. If you recall, I assume most of the country, at least in the United States, for sure at California, we were locked out of our churches. So during that time, there was no church services for many, many months inside of churches where I play. We were able to conduct church services outside, and that's where this came in handy. So I would, on Sunday mornings, bring the Hammond organ with me. We'd set that up outside, and I had an opportunity for weeks, if not actually months, to use this for traditional service work. And that's where I found, you know, coming out of the kind of sound system that we had outside, that two foot stop on the lower just um, wasn't working for me so much. It is nice to have, um, and depending on what you're playing, the kind of music that you're doing, it's, it's a good option to have. Again, a very nice variety of sounds on the lower manual. Let's now turn to the upper manual. All right. <clears throat> And the upper manual is configured very similarly. You have one stop that is at the 16 foot, so that's pitched one octave lower than standard pitch. You have two stops that are eight foot pitch, so standard octave. Then you have a sound from the string family, the viol celeste. We'll listen to that. You have two stops in the four foot category. Those are pitched um, one octave higher than normal pitch. You have a fundamental octave option, and then you have a four foot flute. And then you have a two foot stop. It's a flute tone, so a little softer. I prefer it more to the two foot option that we have available on the lower. We have a three rank mixture on the top, and then our final stop, comes from the Reed family and is an oboe stop. So let's take a listen to what we have on the upper manual. So starting with the lowest tone, uh, Bourdon, this would be, I believe, from the flute family, lower pitch. Then we go to an open diapason, eight foot stop, principal family. Next we have a gedeckt, eight foot stop. This is part of the flute family. Our fourth stop on the upper manual is the viol celeste, and I'll show this to you in two ways. This would be just um, kind of standalone. So that's part of the string family. What I normally will do with a celeste stop on the pipe organ is I'll always typically add an eight foot variety with it. If I have an eight foot string stop that doesn't have kind of that chorusy sound in it, I'll add that or I may add an eight foot flute. So if I call up the eight foot uh, gedeckt on here, it gives me a slightly different tone. <laughs> So that fills it out a little more, becomes a little more rounder in character. That's kind of nice. 
The next stop that we have, now we're going to move up an octave, we have um, the four foot octave, part of our principal family. We'll compare that to the next stop. It's a flute, also a four foot stop. Next we have a two foot flute stop, so two octaves higher. And then just like we had on the lower manual, we have a mixture. It's our second to the last stop. This is a three rank mixture. I'll play it alone. That's a few sounds happening at the same time. Again, something I would never use on its own. I'm always going to add um, some kind of chorus, principal chorus, if you would, to it. So if I pull out my eight foot, my four foot principles, and maybe also add my eight foot and four foot flutes with the mixture, I'll get a much fuller option. And then the last stop that we have is from the Reed family. It is the oboe. This is, this is a nice tone. So a tone like that, I can use that as a solo, for example, um, a solo stop. If I add something to accompany it on the lower manual, I have the melodia and the roar flute. I get something like this. And then if we want to hear what this sounds like, um, kind of a more full option, I've got most of the stops pulled on both manuals, but just to give you a sense of when everything comes together, the kind of sound that you're going to get from the Hammond XK5 with the pipe organ setting, you'll get something like this. So last but not least, on the pedal board, we have two options. We have one kind of modest option. It's probably the one that I use the most when I'm pulling up the pedal board with the sounds that are on, on the Hammond XK5. The, um, the draw bar that's labeled 16, that pulls up a sub bass 16 in combination with a Gedeck 8. We get something like this. The draw bar that's labeled eight foot gives us a combination of principal chorus with a four rank mixture. It's higher pitched, sounds like this. Now if I put them together, and then adding the bass pedals both options pulled out along with a full registration on the organ.
will give us something like this. All right, so that's a look at the Hammond XK5 from the pipe organ palette point of view. Hopefully that's helpful to you. I haven't seen um, a whole lot of people, actually anybody, demo the pipe organ sounds. Um, that's kind of a specific dive into what's available, stop by stop, a few combinations. Hopefully you get the idea. Again, if you're interested in an organ, that you can have for home use that straddles both worlds from rock and pop to traditional classical slash church. For me, there really isn't anything better out there than the Hammond XK5, just a phenomenal instrument. I do have a few videos out on YouTube that I've put together of classical pieces that have been played with the internal sounds, the pipe organ sounds of the Hammond XK5. I'll see about linking those either there or there. We'll see where they land. That'll give you a sense of what the organ does. The other thing that I do with the Hammond XK5 for traditional pipe organ sounds is I will connect it to a software program called Hoptwork. And this is the Cadillac of what software has been able to do to emulate pipe organs. Hoptwork has modeled magnificent pipe organs throughout the world, stop by stop, and through this software, you can, it's kind of similar to the XK5, but with, you're not limited to only nine sounds per manual. Um, you've got, you know, access at your fingertips to the same sounds of organs that were made in the 1600s, 1700s, 1800s that are sitting in phenomenal cathedrals throughout Europe. It's another fun way to play the XK5. So it's a versatile instrument. Again, if you're interested in exploring the world of pipe organ sounds, this um, I think is the way to go. I've been really pleased with it. I hope the video is helpful to you. If you have any questions about this aspect of the Hammond XK5, drop me a note in the comments below. I'll be happy to respond to anything that comes in. And until next time, we'll see you back on the channel with more music-related information. Thanks for watching.